So Father, we have come in here this morning because we're so grateful. We got up and we said we know that this is the day that you have made. And so Father, even as we spend our moments in just worshiping you, through worship and in your word, we thank you that your word is just not ink in the Bible. It is your breath in every page, oh God. And so even this morning as we worship you through your word, we thank you that right now there is already a shifting taking place in every heart, in every home, in every atmosphere because of your presence, oh God. And so we bless you as we continue, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I want to greet you all in Jesus' name. Come on, it's a good morning. Tell somebody it's a good morning because God is in the house. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful this morning that we can be here. So we're going to get straight into the word. We've got limited time. And so I want to speak to you this morning on the power of fasting and prayer. And if you have your Bibles, if you're in your home, it'll be good for you to get in the morning, get up in the morning, gather that Bible, get your notes, and just take down what God is saying through all his servants every morning, all right? Matthew 21, 22 says in the Amplified, if you believe, you will receive what you ask in darkness. If you believe what you receive, uh, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Not in darkness, in prayer. Whatever you ask. So Mark 9, 23, 24 says, And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Now, I want to expound a little bit on, on this beautiful father who actually went to Jesus the one day because his son was, was getting epileptic fits. And when he went there, um, you know, nobody could help him. The disciples couldn't help him. And uh, when Jesus came down from praying, when Jesus came down from praying, he, he said to this man, what is wrong? What's going on? Because there's a bit of shuffling going on. And he said, Rabbi, my son is having these problems going into the water when he falls, going into fire. Nobody could help him. And uh, the Lord said, well, if you believe, it can happen. And he said to Jesus, then, Lord, help my unbelief. So as we continue our journey in fasting and praying, may we understand the power in fasting and prayer through believing that God is able and he is willing if you want him to. He just wants somebody out there to be a believer this morning in your time of waiting, not only through fasting and prayer, but whenever you are seeking God in believing that God is able to do what you think you cannot do, God is able to do. So come on, if there's any doubt or unbelief out there, just like this dad, I want you right now, wherever you are, in the church, in your houses, maybe at your workplace, to say, God, if you're a doubter, I want you in the second day of my fasting and praying, I want you, God, to help me to become a believer. Help my unbelief. Take away the unbelief and help me. We're focusing this year, like you know already, on back to holiness. And I pray that this 21 days will bring you back to holy living. May we become intentional about repenting and transforming our lives. You know that you're seeking God for something beautiful. And I'm going to expound a little bit for a few minutes on the power of fasting and prayer. But I want you to understand something. And I think I heard Jeremy say that in his prayer. He said, we're not here to do rituals. We, this is not a ritual fasting where every beginning of the year we just fast. No, we are hungry and thirsty for God. We want to start this year in a place of discipline. We want to move and, gra and, and gravitate into holiness. So our fasting is not because we just chose to now. It's actually a lifestyle. It should be a lifestyle. You know what the enemy knows? He knows that keeping us from opening our mouths and talking to God is the first step, church. First church, a step, child of God, in making us feel isolated and alone. And because we aren't talking to God, then we will not be able to hear from him. you got to have a dialogue, a conversation to hear what the other one is going to say. And it can't happen. You can't hear what God is saying if you're not having this moment with him, this quiet moment, the loud moment where you're shouting and crying because you can't contain yourself. The quiet one where you sit on your knees or you're laying in your bed and you're just having this moment with him. And I promise you, you will hear God speaking. Your prayer life is a weapon given to us by God to not only use against the enemy, but to also ca cause God's hand, his hand to move on your behalf and to shift atmospheres and 
di and dynamics. Through prayer, we have access to the creator of everything. I love this. We have access, child of God, to the creator of everything just through our prayer. Now, if we are having access to the one who created everything, how much more is he going to give us like he said? Hey, the sparrows don't have to worry where they toil and they sow. I take care of them. How much more is this God going to give us what we desire as the creator of everything? Why? Because we have a personal, intimate relationship with him. We have access to God whenever we want, wherever we want. There's so many benefits in fasting and prayer. Let's look at some of them quickly, right? Fasting brings spiritual clarity. It forces us to trust God for the things we cannot accomplish through our physical strength and being. One of the words that is powerful this year, I know for myself, is the word resilience. I found that resilience tells me that I'm created with the spiritual strength. And when I'm feeling like I cannot do it, then I go to God in prayer and I say, Hey God, I'm needing you right now. I pray that your strength will be invoked in me, oh God. Because the Bible says, when you have strength, you have joy. And so God is speaking to the church even during this time. If you feel like you cannot do it, you feel like there's so much of odds against you, God is saying, go to him and say, hey, God, I need you. I need every aspect of you in my life. Fasting is a great, great way to gain, uh, gain clarity for an important decision. It builds unity with one another and has, has always been used by God to deal. Us. I love this. It has always been used by God, fasting and prayer. Prayer is one of the weapons that God uses to deal a heavy blow on the enemy. Wow. I'm expecting somebody out there, wherever you are, to say, come on, somebody. Because your prayer is so powerful. And the enemy doesn't want you to know that even if your prayer is two words or three words, help me, God. It is powerful in the realm of the spirit. It actually gives the enemy certain blows that he didn't expect. Why? Because of the power in the spirit realm of your words. Your words are so powerful when you're speaking to God, when you're embracing him, when you're dialoguing and you're hearing God through different ways, impressions, visions, dreams. That's what happens when you're seeking God's face. There's so many people in the Bible that fasted before they did anything, before anything happened in the Bible. We hear about so many people. There was victory, miracles, answered prayers. What did they do? These great men and women, they fasted and prayed. Moses fasted before he received the Ten Commandments. Hannah prayed before she bore a son. Esther fasted and prayed before she saved her nation. Jesus prayed before his death that brings us life. Jesus prayed also when he wanted to be refueled, we're talking about the Son of God who wanted to be refueled. And what did he do? He also, after doing whatever he had to do, he would go quietly to God and he would pray to his Father so that he himself, the Son of God, who was man on earth, could be refueled. Fasting and prayer reminds us of our dependence on, on God. It helps us to be in tune with his Spirit, hallelujah, so that we can be guided by his work, through his work, in his work. Prayer and fasting helps to reposition and help our postures of our hearts to become humble. All of a sudden you find that in this moment of praying and fasting, you cannot be ugly. No matter what the enemy tries to tell you, distract you, you cannot. This beautiful weapon starts to work inside of you so powerful that it teaches you how to be humble. You are able to say sorry even if you don't have to. You are able to love even when it's difficult. That's what it does as a weapon. We give the Lord opportunities when we fast and pray to convict us where we have erred, where we have compromised, where we have messed up. It allows us to draw closer to him, to rely on his grace and his strength. And you know what? It also allows us to get a new tongue. One of the things I do whenever I'm fasting and praying, because it must become a lifestyle, it's not a once-off thing, and I want to encourage you this morning, this is not just about fasting the first 21 days in the year and then forgetting about it. No, it's a weapon. It's a weapon that we use continually. And one of the things I do, and I found it works, is I go to God and I say, I want a new tongue. 
And all of a sudden, I find and I hear myself when I'm praying in the spirit. My language is different. And I even take a moment to hear. And from, from the normal, it's gone to record be a show. Take over, shock. And I'm like, okay, the tongue has changed. What does it do? It empowers me to want more of God. Because I start to feel the presence of God, not only in the sound of my voice when I worship him in the spirit. But I start to feel him within me. There's something powerful that happens when I take an hour, half an hour, 20 minutes to just sing in the spirit, to just pray in the spirit. I'm encouraging you this morning. If you're not spirit filled in the sense of talking in tongues for your own edification, go to God in this time and say, God, I want to be filled so that I can speak to you in my quiet moments. Wherever I am, God, I can have this communication with you. Tell you something, the benefits... He answers your prayer. When you are hopeless, pray because God answers prayers. God is not sleeping and he's not passive. He's awake and he's active and he's willing to do whatever you are asking and believing in faith. He's the great I am, the one we are able to call the great I am. He is the beginning. He is the end. There is no in-betweens with God. So if you have enough faith, I know and I believe. I've seen how 2023 unfolded where when I was writing down prayer points, the first thing I said, I want to give you great uh, glory and praise God for who you are. That they were praying, answered prayers to what I wanted. There were some that was answered to what I didn't want because I understood your will in everything. It helps you to gravitate into gratitude. You start to love God because of who he is. We expect prayer to work quickly sometimes, right? Or immediately. But most of the time, this doesn't happen. So I want to tell you that right now. But prayer has no expiration date. It doesn't expire. For you that think, I've been praying for years, Pastor Gitz. I've been really seeking God. I want to tell you, hold on. Hold on to the faith that you have that God is able to do what you cannot do. He answers prayers in very unexpected ways. Sometimes you may not even know how it happens and all of a sudden there's a suddenly in your life and you're like, yo, I don't even think, I didn't even pray, I stopped praying about it. But our God never forgets what we say. Prayer is unstoppable. A humble prayer to God in a time of need can make you unstoppable, impenetrable, and untouchable. That's the thing about prayer. It tells me straight who I am, what I am, where I'm going, and I'm not afraid to step out because I understand that God is with me. Nothing can come around you. Listen to me. If you're a prayer warrior, you want that seeking God, communicating with him, he's going to give you the secrets of his grace, his mercy, his anointing. You can go to him for anything that seems outrageous, that seems impossible. And our God is able. He's such an amazing God. You know, John 15, 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I like this. I love it so much. You remember when King Ahasia, in Second Kings, right? When King Ahasia had sent his army captain and 50 soldiers to kill Elijah, and the soldiers found him on the top of a hill, and they told him, hey, come down, Elijah. And Elijah, wow, oh, I get so excited when I think about this. Elijah said this. This was his reply, right? He was spending time up there praying. And they come and say, hey, come down. And he said this, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you and your 50 men. And again, the fire of God, the Bible says, fell from heaven and killed them. Let me tell you what the anointing in your life does, child of God, as we're going to close just now. The anointing of God allows you to put a demand. You are able to put a demand on your anointing. Hey, when I read this, I was so excited, not because I wanted people to die, because I understood that our God fights our battles. You're not fighting alone. It may seem like you're all alone. It may seem like you there's nobody to support your desire, the things that you need. Listen to me. God is with you. As long as you are spending your time with him, he is with you. I love this. I love this verse so much. Why? Why did this happen? All because one man knew how to pray. So remember this, your decisions to pray can turn your destiny around. Prayer can save, 
can save people from horrible situations. Whether your heart is broken, you're ill or under extreme pressure, God can turn things around for you instantly or sometimes during prolonged times. All he wants to do is to see a child of God that is saying, I'm, I know you are faithful. And oh God, if I'm doubtful at any time, help me every time I'm doubtful to trust who you are, to know who you are, to believe in who you are. Prayer can turn a hardened heart into a soul of fire. In the Bible, you remember Job was in the hardest, darkest time in his life. He had lost his wealth, his struggles, and everything was just mounting up. And what did God do? Job 42.10 says, When Job prayed to his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. That's who God is. The reward for trusting God is worth it. So I want to tell you something. If you believe this morning that there's nothing that can happen, God is saying, all I want you to do is hear. 1 Samuel 1.20 says this. The word Samuel actually means God has heard. So I want to tell you something now. He has heard you. So if you're hungry, you feel you're deprived, you feel you something's are, you know, happening in this time, I want you to seek God for a fresh encounter. And I know that it's going to count. We're going to get the praise team that's going to do. Are you guys going to do us a song? Jeremy, you're going to do us a song. And then I'm going to pray and uh, we're going to close the session. I want you, while Jeremy is coming up here, I want you wherever you are right now, all right? You got a pen and a page, write down things that you're feeling is impossible. And as we're going to pray just now, we're going to ask the presence of God. I want to pray after they do a song and just do the benediction one time because I want to do a declaration. I want you wherever you are. It doesn't matter how your day is unfolding already, how it seems like mm -mm, it's not going to happen. With God, there's everything possible with Him. All right, let's just worship Him for a moment and we're going to close. I commit again with all I am for you. You hold my word in the palm of your hand, and I am yours forever. that I live, the reason that I sing, Jesus, I believe in you, Jesus, I belong to you, you're the reason that I live, the reason that I Walk with you. Come on, wherever you are right now, before we pray. Wherever you go. We believe in you, Jesus. And I will live. Increase of oh God, your power. Your presence all over, Rayenda. Hallelujah. We believe, we believe, we believe, oh God. Shabababababona. Hallelujah. Every man you raise. Hear you, Lord. Shayanda. Increase your presence, oh God. Shabababababona. In every home, in every heart, here I believe, we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe, oh God, Shabba Baba Bono, here I believe.
I just believe it. You're the reason Come that on. I live. Make that your declaration. The reason that I live. Thank you, Father. Father, we're waiting on you this morning, the second day. And we're so grateful that we can sing out. We believe in you. We trust you, the same God of Elijah, the God of Moses and Esther and Ruth and Hannah, the God that is able to do great things. And so this morning, as we continue seeking you, Father, we pray that everything that seems impossible, we will understand that it is possible with you. I pray, God, for a shifting of the anointing to bring breakthroughs in every house, in every individual, in every person that has come before you. Oh God, that our resilience in you will become greater and stronger and the capacity within us will cry out, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I know you are able. Jesus, I long for you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Oh, Raya Kabaya Kore. We thank you, God, for your presence this morning. And Lord, I pray that we will stay wherever we go this morning, today, in the realm of the Spirit. We will cry to you and say, Jesus, we want more of you. And so we bless you, Father, and we praise you. Just raise your hand wherever you are as we do the benediction. And now may the grace and the glory and the power and the resurrected Spirit of Christ rest and abide in every one of you. And as you go out, I declare that there's greater things to come. I declare that this is a month and months ahead that will be months of breakthrough, favor and blessing over every one of us. And we declare it and pronounce it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.